1957. A new era beckons as the USA and Soviet Union engage in a race to space, later followed by France. Four years later, the French space agency CNES is born. Its Toulouse Space Center opens in 1968. Earth observation from space rapidly becomes a priority. 1970, the USA begins testing orbital radar technologies. In 1978, they launch CSAT, the first ocean-observing satellite, and in 1985, GEOSAT. In Toulouse, space-based location and data collection systems are successfully developed. AOL and Argos, and work on geodesy and precise positioning, paved the way for the first joint French-US projects. From the outset, Toulouse establishes itself as a pivotal player in the oceanography revolution, with the decision to develop the Poseidon radar altimeter at the start of the 1980s. Pioneering visionary engineers pull out all the stops in their quest to measure sea surface height to within two centimeters all over the globe. And in 1987, the USA and France agree to develop the Topex Poseidon satellite, successfully launched in 1992. new global picture of the oceans begins to emerge. Sea surface height, ocean circulation, the El Nino episodes observed in 1994 and forecast in 1997. Oceanographers realized it would be impossible to observe the oceans precisely without satellite data. As a result, satellites soon become key assets in understanding ocean circulation and its variations. Meanwhile, the international community is waking up to the reality of climate change and the central role the oceans play in climate variations. The Rio Earth Summit enshrines the first major declarations in support of sustainable development. Twenty years later, in Copenhagen and then the Rio Plus 20 Summit, the obstacles to consensus are plain for all to see. But over these past 20 years, sustained development of space assets and the continued efforts of scientists working together have achieved the transition to operational oceanography. To Topex in 1992, Jason 1 in 2001 and Jason 2 in 2008 the series of French-US satellites built by CNES and NASA, soon to be joined by new partners UMETSAT and NOAA, has spawned new missions like the French-Indian Saral mission in 2013. They form a virtual constellation of altimetry satellites that has seeded a powerful pan-national scientific community. In Venice in September 2012, 800 scientists and engineers from all over the world are meeting to review the state of the art in satellite altimetry. Satellite altimetry provides vital data for the oceanography research and operational oceanography community. The data collected over the last 20 years show that sea level has risen with large regional variations of the order of plus or minus 10 centimeters. Meanwhile, the global mean sea level has risen by 3 millimetres a year, a total of 6 centimetres over the same period. How will it evolve in the decades ahead as the effects of global warming kick in? Satellite monitoring has brought new insights into the variations of ocean circulation and the major ocean currents. For example, the Gulf Stream could be impacted by global warming, resulting in cooler weather across Europe. Daily detection of sea level anomalies lets us forecast the onset of large-scale ocean phenomena like El Niño and La Niña and the calamitous climate effects they leave in their wake. Altimetry is of great value in geodesy and geophysics for observing the figure of the Earth particularly to measure the marine geoid and bathymetry. It is also useful for determining the topography of a glacier 
or the thickness and characteristics of ice, including sea ice. A new and promising science spawned by satellite altimetry is space hydrology. This discipline monitors the level of lakes, closed seas and major rivers with the ultimate goal of improving how we manage water resources. Observing and understanding is one thing, but predicting is another. Ocean models have been developed that use observation data to predict ocean variations. By coupling these predictive models with atmosphere models, we can not only generate weekly or seasonal weather forecasts, but also conduct in-depth climate change analysis. The value of the program, developed by CNES and NASA, lies in how it has enhanced climate change research, while at the same time nurturing practical, model-based applications to underpin more sustainable stewardship of the oceans. Applications like optimizing shipping routes to take advantage of currents, enhancing marine weather forecasting by predicting wave and swell heights, supporting response efforts in the event of an oil spill, helping to identify polluters flushing their ship's oil tanks at sea, better apprehending the risks of installing and operating offshore oil rigs, and helping to manage fish stocks more sustainably. Many other applications are also emerging notably to support planning decisions and operations in coastal areas. Operational oceanography is the result of the vision and foresight of space agencies and research teams. This brand new field covers the full gamut of seafaring aspects and is set to really take off in the coming years, extending its spectrum of commercial, public service and sustainable development applications. Set in train by space agencies, operational oceanography is today a vital tool for both societal and research applications. Demand from the scientific community for data processing and forecasting is strong. In this respect, it could be said that research is a regular customer of operational oceanography. And this sustained research effort is one of the keys to satellite altimetry's huge success. While future global warming is inevitable and sustainable development vital, they can and must be mitigated and supported. With Saral and Jason 3, then Sentinel 3, Jason CS and SWAT, CNES and its European, Indian and US partners have the resources they need to monitor the oceans.